I want to start with hardware, the hardware of the brain. We're going to look at some brain scans. Here's a brain scan of a female brain. All right, equal opportunity. <laughs> Here's a brain scan of the male brain. We have the old Michelob there. That was all through medical school, all through, uh, all through college. I just had lame excuses all the time for all the professors about assignments, all, you know. All right, now we're going to look at real brain scans. And we're going to look at spec scans. If you have a chance to see Daniel Amen later on in the, in the, works, in the uh, track on addictions, just a phenomenal speaker, and uh, he's allowed us to use his spec scans. Just an incredible way to image the brain and find out what's really going on up in our brain in real time. So we're going to show spec scans that he's allowed us to use. So spec scan is special imaging of the brain. This is looking straight down from a bird's eye view down at the brain. This is the, uh, your face here, and this is the back of your head. So I can use these two at the same time. There we go. This is just looking head on at the brain, the top and your chin. This is looking up at the base of your brain from your feet, your face, the back of your head. And these are all normals. This is a normal view inside a little deeper in your brain. Um, your occipital lobe, because that's where your optic nerves go and your eyes, it's always a little bit more active and overactive, so it shows up white as opposed to the other areas that are normal blue. Now, what spec scan does is it takes up a nutrient. So these aren't actually holes in the brain. These are areas of the brain that aren't being perfused very well. There's not enough nutrient going into them, so they're underactive. You know, there's a certain percentage that they're underactive, so they're not actual holes. There's brain tissue there. That brain tissue just isn't working very well. So this is a motorcycle accident with some trauma there, and you see some injury to the brain. This is Alzheimer's disease. There's a normal there, and there's some holes there and some deficits with Alzheimer's, very terrible disease. We're going to look at some addictions and what these toxins do to our brain. Here's a normal brain, and here's a brain with heroin. You notice this is a 39-year-old using ever since a teenager. This is worse than the Alzheimer's brain that we saw. Right? We wonder why these people have trouble with decisions and thinking clearly. Two years of marijuana use, 16-year-old, you know, using for just a couple years, but you can already see the deficits there, impulse control and attention and focus. This is somebody using just for weekends. I only, work, I only use on the weekend. That's it. No big thing. Only 10 years, 28 years old. You see the deficits already. Cocaine use for just two years, deficits. And I'm not, I'm not showing these for you guys to be a, you know, a brain surgeon or anything, just to show you just the damage that's done to the brain, so don't worry about the biology and all that right now. This is alcohol. It's legal. You say, well, it's legal. 21, you're allowed to drink. You know, just uh, weekend use ever since a teenager, deficits in the brain. We have ca coffee drinkers. We have caffeine. Well, this is, pr this is pretty heavy cigarette and coffee use for a while, ever since, you know, ever since 18, when people start to drink coffee, see deficits. How many churches have coffee now and caffeine, all right? Caffeine, you know, constricts your blood vessel so you don't get good blood flow to the brain. Very addicting. Christian drug, caffeine. <laughs> all right. Now we're going to look at some, some diseases. Pseudo-dementia is depression in the elderly. The limbic area lights up when you have depression. This is before treatment, and then after treatment, you can see that normalize. Person with anger and ADD, before treatment, you see some of the deficits after treatment with meds and therapy. Uh, a lot better, filled in. It's about a year after treatment. Somebody with paranoid schizophrenia, see the significant deficits there. It's a very debilitating illness. But after treatment, areas fill in a lot better. Again, this look in the top of the brain, like schizophrenia, and then after treatment. Somebody with depression, suicide, rage, before treatment, and after treatment. PTSD, see the limbic area, cingulate gyrus, basal ganglia, and then after treatment, that's better. PMS, people think PMS is real. Women say yes, men say no. This is the worst day of the cycle. You see the deficits there, and then the best day of her cycle. See how things change just within eight days of a cycle, the different, you know, our brain, when I grew up, our brain, we believed that the brain was, you know, a very static organ, didn't change very much, there wasn't modulation to it, you know, you killed a brain cell, it was dead forever, and you lost that brain cell, this is your brain, this is your brain on drugs kind of thing. Um, you know, our brain is very dynamic, you know, it changes a lot, even from day to day, week to week, our brain changes a lot. It doesn't manifest in our behavior sometimes that significantly, but there's a lot of things going on in our brain. 
All right, so to summarize our hardware, our brains are very dynamic organs, like I was saying. They can be injured easily and diseased. But they can also be strengthened or renewed. The Bible talks about renewing the mind, and I think that renewing is spiritual, psychological, but it's also physiological, as we're going to show. And our brains affect a lot, of, a lot of things and are affected by a lot of things. So a lot of times people come into my office and they say, Dr. Benzio, well, this is just the way I was born. This is the way I was wired. And I say, well, no, God had some specific wiring for you in the beginning, but things have happened along the course of your life, and now wiring is a little different than what was intended. You weren't just born this way.